I'm Tom Malogany for Inside EVs, and I'm standing here in beautiful, sunny Phoenix, Arizona, next to a Lucid Air. We're at the Lucid Air first drive event, so I'm going to be able to get behind the wheel of a Lucid Air, something very few people outside of the company have had the opportunity to do so far. Tomorrow's a big day for us. We're going to do a factory tour of Lucid's Casa Grande Amp One factory, going to have the opportunity to interview members of Lucid's engineering team, and then hop in the Lucid Air for a first drive. Now this is not only a luxury car, but it's an incredibly fast and powerful electric vehicle. It goes zero to 60 in as quick as 2.5 seconds, depending on what version you're driving. I won't find out until tomorrow exactly which version of the Air we'll be driving, but hey, all of the versions of the Lucid Air are pretty fast, so it should be a fun test drive. So if you're interested in the Lucid Air, you're going to want to hang out and see what we bring to you today. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. So as promised, we were shuttled over to Lucid's Amp One manufacturing plant in Casa Grande, Arizona. However, when we arrived, we were told we couldn't film inside, and that really wasn't the original plan. There were only one or two small areas where we were allowed to film anything. Now, Lucid did promise to provide us with some B-roll at a later time, but quite honestly, I wanted to get some unique video and I'm not going to wait for the b-roll and hold up this video. What you're seeing there is the part of the assembly where we were allowed to film and it's where the chassis is married to the vehicle's body. You can see the chassis below is actually in three different sections as it gets raised up and attached to the body. Now one thing I did notice is while it is a modern factory with the latest technology and robotics, a lot of the manufacturing right now is being done by hand. And that may be why Lucid was a little hesitant to allow us to do a lot of filming. They say that that is going to change as manufacturing ramps up. They just began rolling production cars off the assembly line the day we were there. So I guess it's to be expected that things were moving slowly. Lucid has only completed phase one of their 590 acre manufacturing plant site. And they have a capacity to build 30,000 vehicles per year. Phase two is already under construction. When that is complete, they'll be able to build 90,000 cars per year. But the ultimate goal is to have phase three completed, which will then give them the opportunity to produce 400,000 cars per year. While the factory tour may not have turned out the way I had hoped, I was able to grab Eric Bach, Senior Vice President of Product and Chief Engineer for Lucid and ask him to do a bit of a deep dive into efficiency. Now, everything Lucid says seems to be centered around efficiency. It seems to be what they're most proud of and why the air was able to deliver 520 miles of EPA rated range. Bach was more than happy to oblige because after all, it is one of the things he's most proud of in his work at Lucid. All right, so I'm here with Eric Bach, Chief Engineer for the Lucid Air. We're gonna talk about efficiency. Lucid has been telling us over and over again, it's all about efficiency. It's how they squeeze 520 miles out of a 112 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's a very good accomplishment. So Eric, how'd you do it? Well, there's not a simple answer to that question, obviously, right? If you push the limit so dramatically, there are many, many uh, points that you have to uh, cash out in order to get to 520. So it starts obviously with an insanely aero efficient car, right? So aero efficiency. There are actually four key elements to efficiency. Aero efficiency, rolling efficiency and churning motors, then uh, the powertrain efficiency. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one is the auxiliaries, like a 12 volt system. So and all four have to be optimized. So aero efficiency, we showed uh, wind tunnel videos where we are achieving uh, uh, 0.208 uh, uh, CD. Mm -hmm. And we've got a really small car. It's very narrow, it's very shallow. 
a very maybe uh, exaggerate, but it's got a very low frontal area, which helps the error efficiency. So we majored on that one. We developed uh, the battery pack with a diffuser portion in the battery pack. That's why we've got a, a, a um, fiber reinforced plastic base plate. So the diffuser starts 40% behind the end of the battery mm -hmm. and pulls up nice and smoothly so that we have that attached airflow mm -hmm. all the way to the end of the car. Mm -hmm. So looking at every single detail, also in the front we've put in these ducts mm -hmm. to take away the pressure on the front of the car and flow the air around. It actually cleans up the flow and, and exhausts underneath the mirrors. Mm -hmm. So our, our aero, um, uh, head of aero design is a four-time world championship from Formula One. Mm -hmm. And he really um, put everything he has mm -hmm. to work here, together with Derek Jenkins and the design team. So aero efficiency, check. A lot of work. Second one is rolling resistance. We work together with tire manufacturers to create our unique compounds that mm -hmm. generate enough traction, but also uh, lower the rolling resistance. So we've got a, a tire compound and a tire uh, name that is LM1, Lucid Motors 1. I saw that, on. it's on the tire, it, it says LM1. Right, it's yeah. because we put every single uh, a bit of attention mm -hmm onto every single component that right. can create losses. I hope that and doesn't mean the tires are going to be really expensive. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I think they're going to be fine. Okay. Um, also, then you, look, you take the, the friction path towards the motor, right? You've got the drive shafts. You need to watch your drive shaft uh, efficiency. And then inside the motor, the gearbox efficiencies, everything that rotates, rotational inertia, mass inertia, uh, we made sure that that is optimized to reduce the, the friction losses. Mm -hmm. The third one is the powertrain itself. Mm -hmm. I'll get to that because that's maybe the most interesting one. Yeah. Uh, the fourth one is actually all auxiliaries, like the 12 volt systems, the board net, how much do we con uh, consume per hour, what's the, the wattage. And we've, um, we've built our own in-house 12 volt board net architecture and minimize the power consumption of all of those controllers and the units. For instance, also the headlamps mm -hmm. that are the micro lens arrays. They are super efficient and by being super efficient, they consume less power than traditional headlamps mm -hmm. that are as bright as ours yeah. or not even as bright as ours. So let's go back to powertrain efficiency. Mm -hmm. And there, sometimes uh, uh, the word of uh, on the street is that batteries are responsible for efficiency. It's battery efficiency, talking about that. But that's not really what makes efficiency. The battery is essentially your energy storage device. It's nothing else than, in former times, a fuel tank. And you can get a bigger fuel tank or a smaller fuel tank. The battery is there for providing energy. There is a little bit of an efficiency component in the battery when you floor it, right? When you really pull power mm -hmm. and then you make the electrons stream out of the cells uh, with an internal uh, uh, resistance through the, the current collectors, the bus bars, mm -hmm. into the drive units. Uh, while you're pulling that power or regening hard, that is when the battery has an efficiency moment. Mm -hmm. But it's really a moment while you're acce accelerating. Mm -hmm. When you're just driving it on an EPA uh, five cycle, you don't really lose any efficiency inside the pack. Despite that, we've gone meticulously into every single component in the pack, the cell DCR, internal resistance, the, um, the ribbon bonds that we're using, the bus bar layout, the main current collectors, all of that has been, uh, has been optimized so that when you floor it, we lose much less power than our nearest competitor. And it can be on the order of 70 to 100 horsepower that others lose inside the pack. Wow. And we do not. Yeah. But again, it's only a, a transient feature. Mm -hmm. So now looking at the real efficiency gainer, that is the drive unit itself. The drive unit yeah. has been fully designed and developed in-house by Lucid engineers. Uh, you met Dr. Iman yeah. Bala, right? Yep. He is the head of our electromagnetic layout group. He is head of efficiency because we pay a lot of attention to it, as you notice. Right? Yeah. And one thing I want to point out is the Lucid's motors, 670 horsepower, it's tiny. It's, it could fit in my carry-on luggage. 
It's amazing how small that is and then it has 670 horsepower. We've miniaturized the powertrain to an extent that you can essentially put it into every other car, any other car. Yeah. Um, but how did we achieve that groundbreaking efficiency? So the drive unit uh, is comprised of the motor, which is all the electromagnetics. Then it's the transmission, the gearbox and, uh, and differential. And then there's also the inverter part of the driver. Mm -hmm. So all three of these components, including the thermal system that cools or heats, uh, in the motor it actually cools only, um, have been designed in-house meticulously with efficiency in mind. If we start at the inverter, that is the power electronics, it's the brains of our drive unit. Mm -hmm. It essentially um, switches the DC current into AC current. So the DC current comes from the battery pack two-phase two and with high power switching devices we switch the two phases into a three-phase alternate, alternating waveform alternating current in a three-phase waveform that then makes the electromagnetic field rotate around that stator and that rotating electromagnetic field drags the permanent magnets that are in our rotor behind and uh, the electromagnetic magnetic field have, has been designed with efficiency in mind. Uh, we are achieving an extremely high fill factor in the slots. Mm -hmm. In the stator, we've got slots filled with copper. The layout of the electromagnetic design, as I said, um, essentially gets rid of losses that others uh, mm -hmm. get because mm -hmm. they don't simulate their electromagnetic mm -hmm. magnetic fields so well. Uh, also on the rotor, the arrangement of the permanent magnets is also part of how we can reduce um, churning losses, right? Mm -hmm. Cogging torque and have a very highly efficient torquey motor. Mm -hmm. And by having a very good torque, we need less current to produce that torque. So every single step, by the way, has been optimized. Now, thinking about the thermals, when you heat up copper while you are flooring the car, right? You're pushing all that current through the copper windings in that slot. And we did that in our test drive. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, it was good. So when you push the current through the copper, um, then the copper gets hot. Mm -hmm. When copper gets hot, the resistance goes up. And mm -hmm. the, the losses mm -hmm. um, in all conductors actually are current squared times R, times the resistance. So as the copper gets hotter and the R goes up, the losses go up linearly with the, loss, with the, with the R increase. By having an ultra high voltage for a given power level, you need less current yeah. essentially on the one divided by um, amount. And the current goes in with the exponent of two. So it's a squared loss, mm -hmm. the more uh, more current you push into that copper winding. So by going to an ultra high voltage, the 924 uh, max HV, we essentially half or less than half the, the current, which means we quarter the losses in our copper windings. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we found or designed and expanded um, electromagnetic dead zones. Because we simulate all our electromagnetics in house, we were able to spot, EMAD was able to spot areas that do not contribute mm -hmm. to the torque and the efficiency of our electric machine. And that's where we shot uh, slots through, and that's where we cool our motor right mm -hmm. next to the, the heating up copper, so close like nobody else can, uh, can extract heat. And the closer to the copper you extract the heat, the less hot it gets, the less resistance increase you get, and yeah, the more efficient you get. Okay. So that was the electromagnetics. The switching devices are silicon carbide. We have a switching frequency of 10 kilohertz. Yeah. And every time you switch, you lose a little bit of energy mm -hmm. to heat. So by going to silicon carbide, coming from silicon IGBTs, many of our competitors are using, we are reducing the inherent switching losses and the conductive losses dramatically. Another portion there is we've designed an, 
an in-house proprietary heatsink that keeps that silicon carbide really, really cool. The cooler we keep that silicon carbide, the lower the losses are in it. Yeah. So again, it's the ability to cool very efficiently and use top of the uh, tech devices. Right. Now, the gearbox. It's kind of the final one of the three. The gearbox transmission, as we call it, we've, come, we've designed our in-house planetary transmissions and the, the um, differential all in-house. And we go so far as designing the specific shape of the gear tooth. And the gear tooth shape essentially drives lower friction between the gears. We are, when we are providing torque, Mm -hmm. through, the tra through, through the gears, we essentially minimize the friction losses by designing our own gear tooth profile. So we look at every single component, optimize it to the laws of physics, and reach groundbreaking efficiencies, as you saw, 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour on the mm -hmm. GT, which enables a, um, a lower pack size, a, a reduced pack size, relative to our competition, reduces mass, reduces cost and uh, by doing that we need to make less material, we need to mine less resources, mine less aluminium, mine less copper, mine less steel, machine less, transport less and, uh, and, uh, and build less material final products which essentially also reduces the carbon footprint of the car. Right. So it's, you make a super efficient drive unit it has an upstream effect on the value chain into the mining industry. We need to mine less materials. And along the entire supply chain, we reduce carbon dioxide generation. And in use, we reduce carbon dioxide generation, which yeah. means it's better for the planet. That's what we're about. We want to transform um, the sustainability. We want to get more people into electric cars. We want to make them more available. All the manufacturing technologies are super scalable, high volume capable to drive that cost down and make it more available for common people. Well, that's a great explanation. Seems like you guys really took a holistic approach to this. It wasn't that you just focused on powertrain. Uh, they focused on everything to make the vehicle as efficient as possible and they succeeded. You know, 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour on a high power performance luxury vehicle is absolutely fantastic. And congratulations and thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. It was a very good pleasure. Thank you. Stepping inside the air, you're immediately greeted by a 34 inch curved display that's divided into three distinct sections. The heated and ventilated plus massaging seats were both supportive and comfortable. The center console has two cup holders, one USB-A and one USB-C port, as well as two wireless cell phone charging docks. Underneath the armrest, there's a removable tray that exposes a deeper storage compartment. And there's a door that slides forward to close the center compartment if you'd prefer it not be open. The tablet size center infotainment center touchscreen retracts to reveal an additional storage compartment. The rear seating area is extremely comfortable and very spacious. There's tons of leg room and ample headroom. I'm sure that's aided by the fact that there's a the glass roof. On the back of the center console, you'll find a touch screen for the rear passengers heating and cooling. And there's this extra storage compartment that when you pop open, you find on the inside two USB-C ports for the rear passengers use. The Lucid Air is one of the most aerodynamically efficient vehicles ever made. Now Lucid had promised a drag coefficient of 0.21, but at the event, we were told that they actually achieved a 0.208 coefficient of drag. Okay, so it came time for the test drive and Kyle Connor from Out of Spec Reviews and I were paired together with each one taking one leg of the round trip. You're also going to see Ricky from 2-Bit Da Vinci in the back seat because we were all hanging out together and he just jumped in for a ride. I urge you to check out both Kyle and Ricky's Lucid First Drive videos as well to get their take on the event. Lucid had a mix of Dream Edition range and Dream Edition performance vehicles, and Kyle and I waited for a performance vehicle to pull up, letting a few people jump in front of us. As expected, the 1,111 horsepower air is brutally fast. 
That said, it didn't feel quite as punishing from a standstill as it does when you launch a Model S. And I recently drove a Model S long range, so that was fresh in my memory for comparison. However, when I stomped on it at around 30 to 40 miles per hour, the air just lunged forward, as you'd expect from a car that could run a quarter mile in about 10 seconds. The one thing to note is that the vehicle had been used all afternoon for test drives, and it was at 50% state of charge when we drove it, so that alone could account for slightly lower performance than when the vehicle's fully charged. As for the driving experience, I have to admit, 10 to 15 minutes behind the wheel just isn't enough for me to give a fully formed opinion. So this really isn't a comprehensive first drive review. I'm really gonna need more seat time to tell you how the air drives. That said, in the limited time we had, the suspension was set up properly and it really felt like a proper high performance luxury sedan. Cruising along on the highway, it was super smooth and it gives you the feeling that you're almost floating along on the road. But it also provided the right amount of stiffness and hardly any body roll when you took it into the turns. We tried out all three drive modes. That's smooth, swift, and sprint. Sprint being the most powerful. For the Dream Edition performance version, you get 804 horsepower in smooth and swift mode and 1,111 horsepower in sprint. The regenerative braking was strong and the air does support one pedal driving. I really liked how they blended in the regenerative braking. I tried out the active cruise control and lane centering systems. They performed well. Uh, there's a driver monitoring system and even though we tried to make it notify us that we needed to be more alert, it didn't. In fact, there was a point when Kyle turned around and started talking to us in the back seat to try to get the car to prompt him to be more attentive, and it didn't. Uh, so I believe that system could use some tweaking. I'm working with Lucid to arrange a vehicle loan as soon as possible. I really want to conduct a proper driving review, as well as DC fast charging tests and a 70 mile an hour highway range test. The last thing I'll leave you with is this short clip where I stopped the car as I got onto the highway. Before anybody freaks out, don't worry, we made sure there were no cars around us at the time, and I proceeded to do about an eighth of a mile acceleration run in sprint mode. Could you put in sprint? Sprint. Yeah. All right, here 50%. we go, sprint mode, lucid air. There we go, that's there where it goes. Didn't yeah. even break the speed limit. Yeah, so that's no no launch function, just a, a auto hold to wide open acceleration at about 50% state of charge. Uh, definitely ramped it. I couldn't see the speed, but about a couple seconds after launching, it, it gave us max grip. So that's it for our Lucid Air Dream Edition first drive review. I hope we answered the questions that you wanted us to. A couple of things to note here. First of all, I'm personally happy to see that Lucid actually made it to production. And today is start of production for the Lucid Air Dream Edition. They're rolling off the factory as we speak. I was just inside watching them. And that's really good because there was quite a period of time where personally I didn't think Lucid was gonna make it. They were on shaky ground for a couple of years, but they righted the ship and brought the vehicle to production. And I think that's good for the entire industry. The Lucid Air is a very good electric vehicle. 520 miles of range, they broke that 500 mile range barrier. Nobody else but Tesla can even do 400 miles. And they did it so without putting a giant battery in the car, which to me uh, really is the most impressive thing. You know, 112 kilowatt hours isn't a small battery, don't get me wrong, but they squeezed over 500 miles out of that. And that really is impressive. Lucid is laser focused on efficiency, optimizing the efficiency of all of their components. And that's how they've got this vehicle to do over 500 miles of range, deliver incredible performance with only 112 kilowatt hour battery. Well, that's it for our wrap up today. Don't forget, click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.